Right, welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 restoration. For those of you new, my name's Barry. Right, and just like that, it's all over. I think we've gotten to that point where in the last video, we did the hydraulics, we've done the three, group three adjustments, we've got the hydraulics to work. We can safely say, I think, the tractor is now finished in terms of mechanical and hydraulics. Right, we've got the electrics to do, and we've got the tin work to do. And we've got some leaks to solve. And we've got lots of little jobs to do. I've got a list here. I've got me a list of little jobs that I need to do. Let's get my eyes on, we'll go through these little jobs. These are little jobs that I wasn't gonna bother video on because they're just, they're either bolt on or they're reaming or bits and pieces. So, little job that I wanna do. You'll have a, the, the, the tractor's in the garage next door. I'm gonna pop in in a minute and we're gonna have a walk around it. Because it's a beautiful day outside now, but this is Tuesday after Easter. So it's the 2nd of April, isn't it? 2nd of April. And it's on and off showers all day long. It has been, it was raining all day yesterday. I got nothing done yesterday. On and off showers today. So I don't want to bring the tractor out today. But what we're going to do, I want to get this video sorted out so you guys can see where we are with it. So, little job that I want to get started. I'm going to do one section, one piece at a time. And it's all the bare steel that's in there, so the nut and bolt heads, um, anywhere where there's bare steel, I'm gonna take them out, clean them, degrease them, pop them back in, get them primed up with red oxide. At least they're covered, and they're not gonna rust anymore, are they? Because of some of the nuts and bolts that I'm putting in to like the, the tombstone onto the main frame of the engine, where, they weren't primed because I knew they were going to get damaged putting them in. So I didn't bother priming them. Well, obviously, they've gone surface rust again, haven't they? So I'll whip them out one at a time, and we will just give them a quick wire brush, pop them back in after degreasing, pop them back in, and then we'll hoist some primer on, stop them rusting again till we get time to do the whole tractor in a one waft paint job. Um, right. Couple of little oil leaks that's developed. When we did the group three adjustments, I found if I had the three-way valve into position one live, I had a drip coming out of the breather in the bottom of the three-way valve spool. Now it was probably a drop per minute. It's not an enormous leak. It's not flowing. It's just a drop now and again. However, I don't like oil leaks. They make a mess on your floor and, and I just don't like oil leaks. Because they only go one way, I don't they? They like to punch a tire. They only go one way, they get worse. They never ever get any better. So, plan is, <clears throat> we'll whip the spool back out, check, the, check those O-rings, um, see if it's, because that spool was fully rebuilt. I think I rebuilt it before we started the very video series. But um, we will take it to bits, have a look at it again, um, now, David Monkhouse, David will remember this, ages ago, he messaged me, because I, when I rebuilt that, I put the spool back in from the top. Now, David did say, if you do that, you can trim the outer diameter off as you're pushing it back in into the, 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 the valve body because of the sharpness of the internal edges. Um, it may be we've done that. It might be, I was looking at the parts diagram and it shows you the little cap on the bottom where this drain hole is, there's an O-ring behind that. Now it might be that that's the O-ring that's leaking, but we'll see, we'll, we'll get it in a bit and we'll sort it out. We've got another little oil leak, similar sort of rate, one drop per minute, and it appears to be coming out of the seam on the left hand ramshaft cap down the left hand side, no, the right hand side of that cap. 
below where the shaft goes in. So it's somewhere between where the shaft goes in and about halfway down. We need to do some investigation again, find out where that's leaking, and then we'll get that sorted. Um, what else have we got? Put my eyes on. Right, yes, we've got a diesel leak on the lift pump, it would appear. Um, again, we had a leak there when I was rebuilding the engine and it took a bit of seal. I had to buy a new GIC fitting to go in there. Again, I just need to have a look and verify where that is and get that sorted out, either sealed up or nipped up, one of the two. Um, throttle linkage needs to be completed because at the minute it has, I'll show you when we go next door, it's supposed to have, and I, and I have got it, it's here. I, well, I've got half of it. I've got the section with a ball on the end that screws into the, the little arm that fastens onto the bottom of the shaft for your throttle lever. The bit I haven't got is the cup. That's a, a receiver cup that threads onto the end of the linkage that goes forward to the pump. I've got the one for the pump end, but I haven't got the one for the throttle end. Now, when I bought the tractor, it didn't have a one on the throttle end. And I'll show you what we've got next door. It came with this queer arrangement on with a spring. And I think it's just been a, a farmyard fix. So we need to source that, put that right. We still have got to sort out. I've got to get a reamer for this. And we need to sort this out. PTO selector lever. We need to get that reamed with the end of the shaft coming out of the PTO and we'll get that assembled and put back together. As I say, last video, was seat. Right, I need to make a little upstand for the seat but I'm classing that as tin work and body work, not as mechanics. Which is why I'm saying the tractor's complete even though it hasn't got a seat on it. Need a new gasket for a filter bowl. My filter bowl's leaking on the gearbox in a different place. The last time it was leaking, second bolt away from the drain plug. Now it's leaking on the opposite side and it'll, it's, the, it's the gasket. It's weeping past the gasket. Um, I did make a gasket out of thick gasket paper, but I'm 99% I'm sure that should have been a, a very thick cork gasket in that joint. Please let me know in the comments, but I'm positive that should have been a cork gasket in there. And it's just a case of getting the gasket and replacing that, isn't it? And a pair of springs, return springs for the brake pedals. I've been looking around for them and I bought a set off eBay. This, this fella had them on eBay advertised. I think they were about 12 quid each. And they turned up and they were totally wrong. They were advertised as 990 springs, brand new, but they were totally wrong. They didn't even, the, the, the eyes on the end didn't even hook over the pins in the brake pedal or the length of the front piece wouldn't go past the pedal before it would catch if you were operating the pedal, you know what I mean? But I sent them back and the guy admitted, he went, yeah, that's not the ones for the 990. Um, so I'm looking for a set, a pair of those springs. Right, now, what have we been getting done the last couple of days? We've been busy with the dashboard. I've had this in an electrolysis bath for a couple of days and I've just, this is hammer right rust preventative paint and I've just put it on to try and see here would it work because I've tried this before on steel and it didn't seem to work very well. So we've splashed a bit around, especially under here because this is the shelf where your old voltage regulator would have been sat and plugged in. Um, if you had a, a generator on. Um, but obviously there's an alternator on this one, so it's gonna get replaced. I'm gonna leave the shelf in there though. I don't wanna cut that off. But under here, where the two join, there's quite a bit of surface rust in there, so I've got in, cleaned that out, and I coated that up, and I had a bit left, so I thought I would just try it on there. 
Well, it's going quite well, isn't it? I need to have a look at this. <clears throat> this came to me like this, and I don't understand how or why that's getting damaged like that. So what I want to do, um, maybe not today, I'm going to take the steering wheel off, we're going to pop this back on the tractor, we're going to put the, the throttle control lever back in the correct place, top and bottom, so we can see where we are with this. Um, this obviously is manufactured, I don't think this, this certainly isn't, this is damage, but there seems to be some sort of radius in here, as if there should be a like a dog leg on that. But we'll pop it in place, put a bit of tape across, put the rod in, we'll draw on it where it needs to be and we'll get that fixed up and get it back on after it's been painted, of course. Because the weather's picking up, so we might get a bit of paint and done, mind we? And see, it's starting to flash rust again. I'm surprised I come up nice and clean actually. Most of the paint on this came off with the electrolysis. That was a little bit in here that you couldn't get at so and with a grinder either. So I put paint stripper on that and we cleaned it off with paint stripper. Right, so where are we then? At the minute, I've got the oil draining back out the gearbox. I took the bulk of it out this morning. I've got the pan underneath it with a plug out and I'm just going to let it sit for a couple of days. I've got the tractor jacked up with a jack under the right hand side to make sure that leg of the axle drains. Um, the tractor has got two different sized tyres on the rear. The left hand side one's a bigger square topped tyre. The left, the right hand side one is a smaller domed topped tyre, you'll see them when we have a look, which is littler than that, so the tractor leans across, keeping the oil in that side of the axle, so I've jacked it up to get it to run out and drain out, out the way, so we can get it to bits again. Um, two things became apparent when we were doing the Group 3 adjustments and we were running the engine. One is grenade size. We have got a leak on the rear crankshaft seal. At least I think it's a rear crankshaft seal. It's oil is dripping out of the inspection hatch and the bottom of the bell housing. Um, when you put your fingers in, now it did this, it did this when I ran the engine last year in July. But last year I didn't have the rocker box tightened down properly and I thought it was engine oil creeping out the back of the rocker box because the, the tractor was sitting on a, on a backward slope. And I think I thought at the time it was oil weeping out of the back of the rocker box, down the back of the engine, down and through the, the cracks where the, the, all the castings join and dripping out the bottom. Um, it doesn't appear to be that. We are, the, when I get a dry day, I am going to bring the endoscope up and I'm going to go back in up there and see whereabouts it's leaking because I do remember that has been changed. There was a new rope seal put in there. There was half, no, there was a new carrier put in as well um, because when I was fitting, the replacement rope seal, I was pushing it into the carrier with my thumbs and I actually broke off the outer supporting lip of the alloy, the alloy carrier. Um, so I've got a replacement carrier, we'll put that into brand new rope seal, put it all together into position. I had the engine rotating and I did message Lance about this ages ago. Um, for whatever reason, I got to a period where I hadn't rotated the engine for about a month by hand on the front end. And I went back and I turned it one day and there was a, a crack. There was like a, a crack came from that area. 
Yes, and it started rotating again. Now, after that, I think I got a little, I think I got a drip out of that then. And then it stopped. And as I say, I thought it was always just oil coming off the top of the engine, down the back, down at the bottom. So, it looks like potentially we're going to have to split the tractor again, take the clutch out, take the flywheel off, go back in and have a look and see what's going on in there. But I'm going in with the endoscope first to verify that it is that end of the process that's causing what problems. Now, this is the uh, cruise missile size explosion coming next. If you go back to Christmas, when I put the wheels, the final drives on, the wheels on to bring the tractor up here to clear the garage at home, um, we did have the diff lock inserted. Marshall spotted this. I, I think he was the only one to comment on it, but he spotted it. We had to remove the diff lock in order to get the final drive on. Now, well, it wasn't so much we had to remove it, it fell out because when I was putting the final drive in, it bumped it out. So we, we ended up, it's, it's in the box. We've got the diff lock in the box that needs to go into the diff. However, when we got that out and we started to put the casting on, I was rotating the, the, the drive end of the hub so that we could get the brake drum to rotate around the brake shoes to get everything to slide together nicely while snipping it up with the bolts on the inside. And I did notice that the right hand pinion shaft is bent. It's not a lot. It went together. It's not a lot. You can feel it. I'll show you when we go next door because you can rotate the wheel so far and then you can feel the resistance. Now, if we think back to when, when I disassembled the tractor, the diff, the, the ring of bolts around the diff that keep the two half of the diff together were all loose. The bearings on the right hand side, the big bearings that sit in the keep on the gear, the back of the gearbox, that was totally shot, wasn't it? Because it just dropped to bits when I pulled this out. And the big bearing on the pinion shaft had spun in its housing and it started to work its way back in the old gearbox. Remember that? I put a link to the video up here and I'll see if I can find some stills and put some stills in for you. Now that tractor, when I bought it, I got it and it only had four bolts per final drive on each side and they were finger tight because I remember when I dismantled it to pull the final drives off in my head it's like this is going to be a nightmare because these are going to be tight and they're going to be all seized in and we're going to have a lot of trouble and I didn't. I put a spanner on and the came loose and I actually undid a couple of them with my fingers. And when we pulled the right hand side one off, and I still have it, the oil seal carrier had been worn oval where the drive shaft goes in because the drive shafts instead of sitting perpendicular had done that. The final drive castings had tipped up. So I'm thinking, is that why the bearing on the diff had gone, all the bolts on the diff were loose and the pressure, because it had shifted the diff and the bearings, the crown wheel was then putting pressure on the pinion, which has probably caused that pinion bearing to come slack and come forward. Makes you think, doesn't it? Um, so, Right hand side final drive's got to come back off and get stripped. Pinion shaft's got to come out. Again, I'm going to see if we can straighten it. I'm going to pop up and see me, me friend up at Red Row, or Reed Ra, 
as uh, Ken would say. Ken knows where Rido Ra is. So we're going to pop up there, see John, see if we can get this shaft straightened. As I say, it's not much. It's, it was enough to cause the casting to wobble, but not, it wasn't, it wasn't an enormous wobble. It wasn't, a, it was a case of, I could turn the output side of the final drive and it walked on to the brake shoes. But at that point, right, I know a lot of you be saying, so why did you put it back together? Because I had to. At that point, it had to go together, the wheels had to go on, and it had to come up here that night. It physically could not fit back in my garage at home, because if you remember, my garage has got shelves down the side, hasn't it? And it, there just wasn't room for that tractor to fit in my garage. And I knew all along it would have to come to bits again. Um, so I think it was Andy was saying, you'd be looking forward to getting it all together, having a bit drive around in it and that, well, I would love that, but I knew in the back of my mind that this pin, this drive shaft was bent. And I don't, and thinking back to the diff in the gearbox issues, I don't want to push me luck with it. I can push it in and out of the garage here, that's not a problem by hand, but can push it in by, get it in and out by hand, so it's not a major problem. But I just do not want to exert unnecessary force on those bearings, because none of those bearings are designed to take side loads. They are simply there to carry axial loads. They're there to support the shaft and keep it in place. They're not there to design to contain the shaft. So, that's where we're at. Okay. Let's nip next door, have a look, see what we've got, eh? This tire is different to that tire. This one's got a dome top. It's not as big in the diameter as that one. This one's got a flat top and is much bigger, probably two, three inches bigger in the diameter. So consequently, the tractor leans over. Um, so I've jacked it up under here. And as you can see, we've got the wheels off the ground and the whole purpose of that is to, is to get this leg of the axle to drain back into the center and out we've got the drain plug out underneath i'll show you in a minute we've got the drain plug out underneath and i'm going to leave it like that for a couple of days and just let this all drain down nice and quietly on its own so that when we start and take this to bits we don't get a massive flood of oil coming out of anywhere we're going to have to, um, I'm going to have to wait until summer because in order to get that off, this has got to go outside. So I probably will try and get some sort of gazebo thing that I can push this outside into. I'll have to turn it around so that the drive shaft will come out, not against the wall, but again in the middle of the car parking. Um, so we can get that pulled out, take the, sh the shaft out, because where's, I think, I've got the diff all up there, the, the old diff. And as I say, I'll put a link back to the other video where I dismantled it, but all the ring bolts, which kept the two halves of the diff together, were loose, some were actually damaged. And looking back, I'm thinking, is the pressure of this bench shaft where it's, it, it, by the way, it's not that much. It's probably 10, 15 thou that it's moving. Um, it would be nice to, just for your own peace of mind, I've got to pull it out and measure the, the deviation on it. Um, as I say, it, ha it realistically had to go together that day. It had to come up here out the way because once it was out of that other garage with these two final drives on, there was no way it was going to go back in. No way at all. Right. Oh, yes. Um, grease nipples. I'll show you these. Grease nipples there and there. You can see they're brand new. I need a one for their brand new. I've got them at home. The only problem I've got, I bought them off eBay in a box, right? Box, a great big box of probably a hundred. 
you kind of get grease in them. The spring pressure is too great. Um, now I have got a fitting for my grease gun which has got a point on the end and I've seen the Americans using these where you stick the point on the little ball and you push and it forces the ball in and allows you to get grease in. But I kind of get grease past those nipples because it just, you plug your grease gun on, you pump it and all it does is it pushes grease backwards. It just comes out in a mix, an almighty mess all the way around. So, when you're buying your grease nipples, be careful where you're buying them from. Because like this lot, right, there's grease, I've got new grease nipples all over this uh, the tractor and it might be totally useless. I might have to, as you say, change that type of, that style of pipe on my grease gun or I'm going to have to change all the nipples and go to a, to a kosher shop and buy proper ones, not cheap Chinese shite. So where I think it's leaking is somewhere down this edge. The, the drip manifests itself here. And when I get a bit of tissue and go this way, it's dry. When I come this way up here, it's wet. But when you get up towards this end, it's dry up here. So it's not as if it's up here, it's around here somewhere where it's leaking. Now all these are torqued up and this is 515 on here. But we'll see, won't we? We'll take it a bits again and we'll have a look. We'll tie the um, we'll tie the lift arm, the rock shaft rather. We'll tie the rock shaft in with a strap so that when I take the cover off it cannot come backwards and twist and damage any of the internals in this bracket. We'll have a look at that. Right, let's skip around the front. See, oh, my glasses. Oh God, that's all you need, isn't it? I can't blind with you. Right, so we've got a bottom of a three-way valve. You can see there, tiny little drop of oil. Now, as I say, if I put that valve if I put the valve, that's in two there. That's one, two, one live and live. So I'll have them one live, I get one drop per minute if I'm lucky. It's even less when you stop the engine because it doesn't drip at all. It stops dripping, so does the back. So it might be a thing just to not run the engine in it, give it a quick polish, clean up, give it a wash now and again, leave it sitting on the drive like a toy. That's no good, is it? Uh, they're designed to work, aren't they? They're designed to run anyway. Um, right, so, and as I say, let's have a look down here. As I say, you can see, well, we've drained the bulk of the oil out. I've got two full pans out of it this morning. I've left the drain plug out and I'm going to leave it out for the next couple of days just so this can all run down and drain out. We're going to drop that filter bowl back off, clean everything up, get a nice new gasket for it, sort that one out, sort these two out. As I say, the elephant in the room is the crankshaft seal for, isn't it? We're going to have to I think we're going to have to break the tractor open again um, and go in. If you take the gearbox lid off, steering gear, tank, bell housing cover, clutch stop brake out. No, you can't because of the PTO, the cardinal shaft's on in it, so you cannot do that. I was, no, forget that. That was just a silly thought. Um, I was thinking of trying to get this out without splitting it, but you can't because the cordon shaft goes through everything as well. Um, so we're going to split it. If It'll be split here. Everything down here has got to come off. Probably quick and quicker and easier to do that, isn't it, actually? Um, pull it forward, have a look at that rope seal, see what's going on. It's not like you can even put a lip seal, a replacement lip seal in there because the, the carrier 
has to be split. You've got the crankshaft comes out with the, the, the flywheel carrier, which is pressed onto the back of the crank, and that doesn't come off. And the rope seal is smaller than that, so you've got to go in behind that carrier flange and put the two halves together and bolt it onto the block. And you know what, in my head, for the life of me, I cannot remember if I sealed the carrier to the block. Wouldn't it be a bugger if the rope seal was fine, but it was the was weeping past the carrier to the block joint because I didn't put any 515 or rare uh, sealant on it. <laughs> anyway, right, so this, yeah, we've got a throttle link. See what I mean about this throttle? This came to me like this. This is the bottom of the, th the arm coming down from the dashboard. You got your little offset here and you've got this square block with a hole in here, with a pin in it, and the throttle rod comes through the hole, double nutted. Now, I've got the replacement for here with a ball on the end, but I need the little cup, receiver cup to go on here. Because this, when I bought it, there's a, there's a see the collar here? This had a spring on from here to here to keep this tensioned outwards so that when you moved that the spring pushed on that collar and moved the throttle linkage forward so I need to put that that's one of the little jobs that I need to put right more work and put it on now what I mean. right right guys that's it for this roundup and as I say I'm classing this as complete now, mechanically and hydraulically. Yes, there's a few leaks, there's a few odd jobs to do. We're going to start on the tin work. I want the dashboard put on so we can do the wiring, because the wiring will be the next thing on this, other than sorting these out. But the wiring will be the next thing. I need to buy... I need to buy a four-way ignition switch, the tractor, because it had a generator on. Well, it didn't, did it? The tractor, when it came, had an alternator on, but it only had a three-way switch on, which was off, run, crank, right? I need a one with off, run, uh, heat, and crank. So I need a four-way switch. And we're going to get this all put back together. We're going to get the alternator lights wired in. We're going to get everything to work off the keys. I'm going to make a little bracket, temporary-like, to put our seat on here so we can sit on the tractor, start it, get it to drive. We will take that to bits, and we will find out what the hell's going on in there. And at the same time, we get our diff lock put in, won't we? I suppose you've got to look on the bright side, don't you? It gives you an opportunity to do a couple of good videos. Crankshaft seal, because that was done before I started doing the video series. I rebuilt the engine, I had it all complete back together before I started the video series, so I got a chance to go in, split the track, didn't do that, and pulling this in bits again. We'll see. Thanks very much for joining me even if we are just talking instead of tinkering. Um, hopefully it gives you an insight as to what we, where we are with our tractor and what we've got to do to get, get it completed. No leaks. I will say, between doing the Group 3s and today, those lift arms, I've got them locked in position now because I was draining the oil out. Those lift arms never dropped. There was, it's one good thing about it, we, we did the setup, we lifted the arms up, we went through the whole process. Those arms did not lose any pressure at all. The leaks were always on the low pressure side of it, the return oil side of it, not the high pressure side of it. So it's something to be grateful for, isn't it? Um, 
and I was over the moon that even though it had been standing a good few days now, I think about a, maybe it's even a week, that the arms hadn't dropped at all and didn't drop till I pushed the lever forward and then they would start and come down. So I've locked them up out the way, keep them off the floor, just keep them clean and tidy. <clears throat> right guys, as I say, thanks very much for joining us. As always, your time is greatly appreciated when you come spend a bit of time with us in my garage. Um, but remember, don't overthink it. It's only nuts and bolts and one or two oil leaks. Catch us in the next one. Ta-da now.